All right, I think we are live. So uh, we'll get started. I'll let you kind of talk about the giveaway first. I hope everybody's doing good, by the way. Yeah, so if you guys watched um, the video that we published this morning, was it yes, this, morning? this morning? Okay, so um, we posted a video, and if you guys will comment on that video, that's going to be a video that um, I go back to, and we're going to put everybody's names who have liked and commented on there in a pot, and once we reach our thousand, we're going to um, draw a name, and so we mentioned, I mentioned the prize prizes that we're going to give away. We're going to draw two people. The first person we're going to do is our Max Happy Homestead hat. And you've seen Colby wear them in a lot of our videos. And the next thing is going to be some of the seeds that we have collected. So I'm going to go over a few of those. Hey, um, a ver it, it's going to be a variety. It may not be all of these. It may be um, some of them. And I may I have some more seeds that I have to collect. So, um, hey, Green Jerry. We'll, we'll see, but it's going to be a variety. So here's some sunflower seeds. I just collected these a few days ago. This is dill. So there's some dill. I love dill too. Um, also, here's lettuce. So here's some lettuce seed. All of these have come from our homestead as well. So we'll be happy to share with you guys. This is some marigold seed, mustard greens. I hope so, green green. Stem broccoli. Now, this is not going to be like your heads of broccoli that grow real big. This is going to be more like it's going to put off a sheet of broccoli, a little sheet of broccoli. So it's a little bit different. It's called stem broccoli. But um, you can see that I have some seeds down there. This is heirloom lettuce. And this is ba some basil that I've started collecting. Now, I've already actually planted a lot of this basil and it has already grown. So I already have some seeds that I collected personally um, and I already have new basil plants going with this same seed. So we're excited about that. We're going to draw two winners. Um, like I said, one's going to get a hat and one's going to get a variety of those seeds that come from our homestead. So make sure y'all watch that video and comment on it because we are going to pick two winners as soon as we reach our goal and meet that thousand. So we're super excited about that. Hey, Katie. Hey, Vicki. Hey, uh, Patty. Thank y'all for joining us. Um, yeah, so we're going to hopefully have some more seed um, also to, to, to utilize as well. Um, the second thing we were going to kind of touch base on was the bee incident. I don't know if y'all saw uh, on Facebook, we had a, some pictures of some dead bees. But uh, If you need to grab the phone now. Oh, it's fine. Um, but what happened was we had uh, we have 14, uh, 14 hives. Um, and the apiary by our house it has 10 hives itself. Now, Five or six of those are younger hives. They're not as, as docile as my original hives. They're, they're, they're kind of wild and uh, they like to sting. So therefore, we, we take all precautions when we're going into those hives. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I, I like stuff kelp. I don't like grass growing around our bee houses. So we, we, we cut around our bee houses. We weed eat all those kind of good things. But uh, I weeded around these hives. And usually when I weed eat around the hives, they go crazy and, and just, they, they look like they're swarming, which they're not. They're just mad. They're that just we're really <laughs> mad. <laughs> they're just mad. So you can hear them pop in my suit. So um, my daughter, our, our daughter, I pulled around the house and she was looking for me, but they're used to running through the, the bee apiaries. Yeah. On a typical day, we can walk, like we have one side set up over here and one side set up over here with a walkway in the middle. Hey, beach family. And on a typical day, we can slowly walk through there, go into the other side, through the path of the other side of our property and they don't bother us. But he had just weed eaten and that was the problem. It got crazy. So what happened was, um, she ran trying to get to, we, we just bought a little camper to start making these trips to uh, some of the things that we're going to do vacation, but really more than that to the homesteader events and things like that. Uh, Cause we actually found somebody that's going to hand milk for us or, or milk or cow for us. So that was good. So but anyway, she was running over there and when she ran over there, she ran straight through the apiary and, um, and, and bees just they they attacked, attacked her. her. Um, and luckily I was outside. I, I didn't see where she was, but I, as soon as she ran over there, 
um, I yelled at them to, to don't go close to the apiary because I just cut and I know they get wild. Well, as soon as I said that, I saw her in the apiary. So then I start running towards her because I know at this point she's turning around, she acting is crazy, like freaking, out. freaking out. I mean, like grabbing her head. So I'm I'm scared to death that she is getting just tore up with bees. So you can see the bees following her, which is crazy. I was inside, so I didn't know any of this was going on. So I'm I'm at this point I'm suited up still because I was weed eating around us. So I'm ripping my suit off trying to get to her. So I finally get to her, and when we get to her, she's already got a few bee, bee stings on her back. She's uh, she had one, one kind of on her neck here, and then she's going crazy. Luckily, she has a real thick head of hair. But really she thick. had she had probably 30 or 40 bees just like stuck like a in helmet. her hair. They were like a helmet on her head. So so I just started like swatting her, and as I'm swatting her, they're stinging me, which at this point we're just trying to get them off her. So we finally get them off her um or as much as we could. And I'm I'm I like picking her up running into the house because the bees are still kind of following us. My other daughter was there. She didn't know what was going on. So she's just screaming because she just wanted to scream. So we're all she was screaming. She scared because <laughs> it, Aid, uh, Colby and Harley were in panic. And when I looked out the back window, because I was in the kitchen, when I looked out the back window, all I hear is screaming. So I run to the back and her hair's going everywhere. And Colby's ripping her clothes off. And I was like, what is going on? And Colby was like, she's got bees on her. Well, I'm thinking she just got a bee or two on her. And he said, no, she was covered in bees. So by the time we got her inside, she was like, they're in my hair. They're in my hair. And we started going through her hair. And sure enough, there was probably yeah, what, several, four or five, but one stronger. A few, uh, there and was then a she few went crazy her, again. And yeah. got, the stinger got stuck in. But anyway, it was terrible. Luckily, though. The blessing of the whole situation it was I was outside because she really panicked. And of course, anybody would when you're attacked by bees with no suit on. Um, yeah, she was just in a short sleeve shirt and shorts. But thankfully, the ones that got in her head, she only got stung a few times. Um, and the rest of them, we were able to kill them. As we seen them wadded up in her hair, we were able to kill them and then get them out before they could sting her. And then she got several on her back, but thankfully, um, she okay. never swelled. I did some. Um, <laughs> well, we dosed her full of Benadryl. Too, I did so immediately was, give her some Benadryl. Like, and oh, I have some essential oil that I got from Plant Therapy that I highly recommend. It's called Skin Soother. So I diluted that down um, in a carrier of just some grape seed oil and immediately put that all over her. And she rested for the afternoon and um, has been great since. But we went out to the camper today and she I was putting loading some things up in there. And she heard a uh, horse fly. And she started freaking out. Thanks for stopping in, Green Dream. So, so she, um, I, I know that that scarred her a little bit. I don't think she'll yeah, be. Yeah, she's as, okay. We're we're glad that she's okay. Yeah. But luckily, I was outside. Luckily, she she did run towards the house. Um, but you know that's always scary for anybody that's she's seven. I mean, here she is, and she's trying to to fend off bees and trying to get in the house. So it's crazy. Katie crazy, loves crazy. it. How about daddy? Aren't you allergic to bees? And the answer to that <laughs> is yes. So and I actually he got was stung getting stung and his hand swole up. Look, show him the mark on your hand. Well, you can can't you see, it? see it. If you can see no, you can't this. See it. So this st sting had his whole hand swole up from trying to get the bees off of Harley. But the main thing, she was okay. She was so. okay. So we were really, um, I was really worried once I started seeing all the bees in her hair because I didn't know how many she had got stung on her head. But there was one that was really bad kind of in the top. And I got the stinger out. I, and that's the one she complained of the most. Yeah. And she had a stinger left that I found in there. And once I got that out, I, like I said, I put some of that oil on there and, and she did OK after that. But that was pretty that was pretty scary. So. It was uh, BW family. What happened was we went I, I weeded around. I'll make a quick story since we just discussed this. But we I was weeding around our bees because we try to keep the grass down. And uh, our seven year old ran in right after we uh, weeded it. Our bees were crazy. This is our not as docile uh, apiary. And they had just attacked her. She got about five or six stings. but um, the one in her head was probably the worst, but she she was attacked by them. But uh, yeah, by the time they crazy. got up to the house, they had gotten most of them off of her. But she had several in her hair, and um, the picture that you guys saw on Instagram and Facebook for those of you who saw that, 
um, when Colby, right when she walked in the door is when he ripped her clothes off um, because they were all over. I mean, they were still on her. Um, and I had cleaned all the ones up that we had killed in her hair. I cleaned all those up because we were in the bathroom at that point. And I found those two on the floor by the door. So that's the picture that I uh, take had taken that picture because I was still finding dead bees in the house. And I was yeah. like, okay, this is crazy. After I don't about, want this to happen again. I think after about 15 or 20 minutes, we were still, we found, we found one more bee in her hair after about 15 minutes. Yeah, so. and, they, and her hair is like probably three or four times yeah, thicker than luckily mine. Luckily, it was, it was thick hair I, to I, be honest with you. It, it yeah. would have been worse because they were all, they, it's like a they helmet. Were, yeah. I mean, it was like a helmet on her. Um, but hey, we got them off. That was the main thing. So it could have been worse. She was, like I said, dosed up on Benadryl. So the rest of the day, she pretty much was out of there. But, uh, but hey, she's okay. That's the main she's thing. She's so. okay. And she, no allergic reactions or anything like that. So we were very thankful for that. <laughs> um, another fun thing I had to do today. <laughs> um, we had, we have, of course, our cows. Um, we have, if y'all remember the bull calf, uh, that was terrible. And then we finally got rid of, it was terrible. I mean, if Thank you, you watch any family. of our, we are glad she's okay too. If you watch any of our videos with the bull calf sizzle, uh, not only was he difficult, I was so glad to see him go. Then all of a sudden, uh, this, he had, he had a little infection over his eye when we were getting rid of him, which, uh, we were taking him to a cell barn. The cell barn knew about it. No big deal. Cause they were, that's just what they do. However, Getting rid of this cow ended up causing another issue for our heifer. She ended up getting this infection because she was with him basically before we sold it. The black Angus. The black Angus named uh, Beauty. So, and la of course, this cow was still stressing me out, even though he's even, not even here anymore. <laughs> uh, so, anyways, this today we realized, oh, man, Beauty's got this infection. And um, at this this farm, we we don't have a – we have a, a chute and a, a catch pen, but not a true head gap. <laughs> Uh, we just use our stanchions because if we're treating our, you know, our, our milk cows and, and jerseys, they just do fine. But we've never done this, this little Angus like this. So, so I'm thinking, what are we going to do? We either got to load her up again, which we, we just loaded them up last week and tagged them. So she stresses out to be loaded. It's been a so few weeks, a few weeks. Okay. So anyways, we, we loaded her up a few weeks ago. She's stressed out. So we try not to do that. So I was thinking, what can we do? Well, the guy that, that helps me with cows, he said, look, just, you know, tie her up to a post. She'll be fine. As long as you're feeding her, she won't have any issues. And she really did good. She surprised did me. Did you tell him what you had to do to her? What did I? Oh, well, I had to give her a shot. Yeah. So here I, I am. I was thinking you're going to inject that needle into her and she's going to run off or she's going to pull a certain way and you're going to break the needle off in her. Yeah, that was, kinda, that was kind of scary, too. And so we don't have a we don't really have a shooter head gap here for her to be, you know, to be captured in there. Well, she can get a little wild. I mean, she 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 just likes to buck and throw Thank her you legs out uh, because, like I said, she's just a she's just a young heifer. So, anyways, here I am trying to. to aid, I've got Aiden holding the reins, and we'll have a video probably on this. But he's holding this rope. It's like a boat rope. It's an old school boat rope. So he's holding the rope. And it's, it's lassoed around this uh this piece of wood, trying to keep her calm. What lo and behold, I was thinking the hardest thing was to put her into the little um not noose, but put her into the little rope. So, but, you know, she did really good. I just put her head right in when she was eating. So I said, well, this is going to be a lot easier than I thought. Well, man, I tried to, I tried to, to I, we did all the homeopathic things. So please understand, we don't go and do shots and medicine. We don't, we just don't like that. But this was our last resort. We've done the, the we did the, the shakelys. We did everything. Um, did the mineral block to try to get her minerals up, but it, nothing was working. So here we are. We're having to give a shot to a cow on a rope. So I, the first time I tried, she went crazy. I guess she just felt the needle. And, man, she went crazy. She, she bucked for a little bit. Thank God, sir. But uh, it's, finally, she calmed down. Aiden held the reins. And Aiden scared more than the cow, I think, because well, he's on the other side. She's grown, though. I mean, she's pretty big. So, anyways, yeah. we were able to get her. And so we, we gave her a ton of food, a ton of creep. So she was sitting there just eating her creep. And so, finally, I was able to inject her. It worked out perfect. but. Um, I, I wouldn't advise that if you have a shoot of any kind, please use it. But uh, that's all we had. And again, we were going uh, out of town tomorrow. So we wanted to make sure we get her taken care of before we went. So it's been a crazy few days here. So I'm hoping to, to have a little bit easier uh, next few days. So 
Uh, we are, we've been disking. I, I have a video coming out tomorrow. We've been trying to clean up and trying to make sure everything looks good for the pumpkin patch and also uh, trying to get some good Bermuda growing some of the, the older paddocks. But uh, other than that, I ho I'm hoping we're having a little bit better week than what we've had so far this week. So yeah. it's been crazy. Hey, Paula Joe. We're glad you could stop in. Yeah. So for the ones that are just um, popping in, I talked about this uh, a little bit. So you, most of, I see some people that are commenting that have already commented on our giveaway video. But for those who haven't, here are some seeds that I've collected over the past few weeks that are going to be part of our give, giveaway. So I'm going to run through those real quick. Some sunflower seeds. It'll be a variety. It may be some of these. It may be um, a few less. It just depends on what I have. There's still more out there I've got to get to. Sunflower seeds. Deal. Our deal is crazy. Our deal is put off like nuts, seed-wise. Uh, heirloom lettuce. Basil. And I have just planted some of these basil seeds, and uh, they have sprouted and done very well. Uh, Stem broccoli. Mustard greens. We're from the south. We love mustard <laughs> greens. Marigolds. And lettuce. This is um, just your, this is not like head lettuce. It's like the it's kind lettuce. that grow up. Yeah, leaves know? lettuce. Yes, we deserve a calmer week. I hope we'll get one uh, <laughs> for sure. Um, that's neat. Honey Hollow said with horses, they uh, punch the neck just before they give a shot. At the wow. I've never, tr I've never thought of that. I've never heard of that. Anytime we had to do anything to cattle, we, we would load them up and, and, and take them to a, just Might a true shoot. But you know what? That might be a great thing because I, I've never, never heard of that. I think that's the coolest thing in the world. So I'm going to try that with a cow. They might kick me, though. <laughs> I hit them, they kick me. So hopefully that won't happen. Um, let's see. Yes. Yeah, our deal Our deal is going nuts. Yeah. We. Um, the great thing about it's deal. It's all volunteer, too. Did, didn't it say my first year to grow deal? So the great thing about deal is when you grow deal, it's going to grow up. You harvest off of it. When you kind of um, stop harvesting off of it in the Stem starts getting real thick. It's going to put off this big, huge yellow flower. If you let That's that really flower pretty. go, it's going to turn into these little pods. And those little pods will turn into these real big seeds. I'm not sure how beautiful but that is. And then once they get to that seed, they're so easy to harvest too. Like uh, there are some seeds that are really hard to get, but then there are some that are really easy to get. And deal is one of them. Once I know it hasn't been raining, there's mo no moisture. I just put my bag under there and lay that flower head over and just rake the seeds off in the bag. And it's so easy to do. And that's probably half our deal. We actually, yeah, I we have, have a lot of volunteers, so we'll let it just fall and, and kind of re-sprout. And it will, <laughs> once it seeds and falls and on the ground, it will like replant itself and you'll have deal growing <laughs> everywhere. VW Family Farm, I agree. Uh, I have this running joke with my son and I tell Missy all the time, <laughs> if a cow makes me mad, like if, I'm, if I've got a bucket of feed or I'm taking a, a, a bell of hay somewhere, uh, it's, it's, they make me so mad, they'll run into the, my back and that just infuriates me. And I'll, I'll, I'll threaten them and, and get mad at them and they could care less, they just want the feed. But it, it's amazing how they can make me so mad. Especially a cow can make me so mad. Allie and her horns. I mean, they can make me just so mad. And I get so mad. But then I'm, when I look at them, I'm like, I really love these cows. <laughs> <laughs> so so it's, it's really fun. But like the other day, like Misty said, Allie horned me. She's got horns. That's the only she cow I have. She knows how to use them, too. Yeah, she does. And so for she anyway, she'll come behind us, you. But only when she's really irritated. But she really gets after the other cows with those horns. But uh, she'll she'll come behind you and just grab you right there in your side, and uh, man, that just irritates me. I always want to kick or hit her, but I never do. And then all of a sudden, I'll I look back and I'm like, man, I really like this cow. <laughs> so she just wants to eat. So they just get excited. But this one was the little heifer, so she gets a little crazy. So I was a little nervous, to be honest with you. It is harder to transplant it, but I have successfully done it. Um, I had probably half this amount of seed. And you can see it's just in the bottom, which is a good bit of seed. <laughs> but I have taken a big, huge flat 
and filled it up with dirt and sprinkled my seed all over it and let the deal grow up. And then in my raised beds, I would just get, and it's very, very delicate. I would just gather up little portions and plant my raised beds. And I had probably half of those to do well, which was still 10 out of 20. So I have them all, have it all in my raised beds now. And once it grows up and gets hardy and mature and flowers and those flowers turn to seeds and those seeds start falling, the wind will move it, bugs will move it, whatever. It will transplant itself everywhere. So, uh, BW, when you make that shirt, will you please send me one? I'll be glad to buy it too. Hey, their daughter <laughs> makes shirts. She <laughs> needs to make that one for me because I'm telling you, I need that for sure. You know what I have to do? <laughs> Because I've, there's been times I've had to ask for forgiveness after messing with cows. I'm not going to joke, but I have to. I literally now uh, I turn on Pandora. I turn on my Christian radio just so I can deal with the cows. Because sometimes they get mad. But Ben, if I have music playing, <laughs> I try not to get mad. But that's I need that shirt. I really do. Uh, I must apologize. They put some tennis balls. Uh, or put some pool noodles on the tip of her horns. That's actually a really good idea. <laughs> and she got, and she got me one time right here in the bend of my arm, and it left a little bit of bruise. Um, but she really gets those other cows. She's the leader of the pack. So if she doesn't like our milk cow, they they kind of she tries to boss. Um, our Allie's our, our is the one that is pregnant. And like I said, she's she's probably fisting the cat, but. Uh, Elsa's the one we're milking, but it's like she's jealous of her. I don't know. She yeah. she just doesn't like her. I mean, she she'll, she, she horns her just about every time. Yeah, it doesn't matter where she's at, what part of the grass she's, she's eating. Run she'll just her. go after her <laughs> and just get her with those horns. So we try to keep them apart. So, but that's funny. Yeah, we we need to uh, air one radio. Absolutely, you need to tell her to make that shirt. I need to buy that shirt from you for sure. But yeah, it's it's just been a long weekend. So I'm, or week. I'm hoping for an easier weekend. Um, Miss Patty said, I've had a hard time growing deal. Can you tell me maybe what, what it's done uh, around here? We live in the deep south and it stays pretty hot. So um, maybe tell me kind of what it's done and I'm, I'll see if I can help you. I've, I've usually had pretty successful deal yeah. harvest. Um, I've got it dried. We use it fresh on baked chicken. Um, I canned a million pickles last year. We won't need pickles for a long time. And I use dill and on all of that. Um, but are any type herb, anything that's real delicate does not like a lot of water. So always light on the water. Uh, you don't want to stress it for sure. I'm, I'm going to go check on the baby. That's fine. Our, our baby's going crazy in there. Yes. Okay. I, I'm going to have to have that shirt. But yeah, we, um, you know, the cows are, are definitely are fun. I, I, I joke, but they really can. They can. I mean, like today we were trying to put them in, in the paddock. The second paddock is still is growing well over on that side. We have eight paddocks, but the one we were trying to push them in today, they've been in and there's still a lot of grass. So we've been trying to keep them in it. But uh, just because Allie wanted instead of following, she's usually my leader. So she, once she leads, all the rest will follow. But this morning, instead of leading, she wanted to kind of go around and try to taunt. Elsa, the milk cow. So here she is. She's circling back around. Well, since she's circling, it's like a train, hey. like the pecking order. Can you say, hey, buddy? So anyway, so she circles around. So now instead of them going into the new paddock, they're all circling around trying to find her, fight her. Uh, so they're all just going in a circle around me instead of training ah. into the new paddock. So uh, it's just been a, a bit for the last few days. But, you know, she usually is the leader. But if she's around our milk cow that we're milking now, like I said, it just it gets a little crazy. So. Um, it's just something. So. Did you uh, answer that? I did. How many cows? Can I... Okay, she's going country farms. Uh, I have we have 30, 30, 36 to forty acres uh, on our homestead farm. Um, now, of that, we only have about five or six that are devoted to paddocks. Uh, we do intense grazing. I mean. True intense grazing. Well, um, Sizzle's not here anymore. Yeah, we so. okay. Well, we took one cow out, so we have four cows on those uh, eight paddocks, basically. So what we do is we rotate every every Friday, unless there's a situation where we've had a lot of rain, then we'll sacrifice a paddock and leave them in there. Or if we've had a lot of rain and all of a sudden the grass looks good in one, we may leave them for a little bit longer. He might go crazy. Don't keep um, but. It's, you can do that. Uh, you can do the the, the 1.5 acres if you have 
one or two cows on that 1.5 acres. As long as you're doing, take that 1.5 acres, maybe go to three paddocks, maybe a half acre per paddock. Um, you've got to make sure you have fresh grass and learn to move them in a rotational way. The only thing I tell you that will cause damage to that is if all of a sudden you have a major drought situation or a major uh, rain situation for over a week or two, um, you, you almost have to sacrifice a paddock because what you're going to do is you're going to have to then keep them in that paddock. And, and what you don't want to do is let the grass go to dirt. You need to keep your grass up. Um, I, what we do, we try to keep our grass at, at two to three inches uh, when we move them. So if we're at five or six or seven inches or, or of course higher, when we move them into that paddock, we want them to eat that paddock down to where we, it looks like we've just cut the grass. And that's what they'll do. One thing that, that I think people don't learn well is with grass management, we don't weed, we don't put any weed herbicide down, we don't do any fertilizing on our main summer plots because ultimately they're putting manure down. We're they're spreading it, or we're allowing you know normal creatures to spread it. Um, but to be honest with you, we don't have any weeds, and we make them stay in those paddocks until they eat everything down. We we make them do that. Uh, if you allow them to just free range on that 1.5 acres, what they're going to do is they're going to eat only what they want to eat. Um, the only thing too, um, which I see somebody just mentioned it, when you sacrifice a paddock, if you have to keep them in that paddock long and they start going to dirt, you have to watch for um, mud because a cow will go lay in mud. A cow will go put their food in mud. They'll use the restroom right where they're eating. The main thing is if you do that, you, they could be sick so you have to be careful if you have a little acreage um just make sure you're rotating them well make sure they're getting high minerals good food if, if you're feeding them i don't know if you're feeding them uh hay or if you're feeding them um feed but uh if you can try to keep them on grass like mine i only feed truly feed uh elsa elsa is my milk cow so i do give her a pelletized dairy pellet and alfalfa other than that, uh, we're purely grass fed on the other cows because there's plenty of grass because we're rotating like we're supposed to. Um, but like the other day, we had we had to kind of sacrifice a, pad, a, pad, a paddock here because we had about three or four bad days of about two or three inch rain. So instead of moving them into a new paddock, we kept them in there for about an extra two or three days, let it dry out, and then we moved them. But we still have plenty of grass. So you got to be careful of that. We love y'all's accent. Hey, <laughs> y'all are not too much north of us, sir. Um, um, I, I saw, uh, are y'all going to the um, bash on the yeah. sticks? We've been talking about it. Um, we're still trying to work on that. Uh, if we can, yes, we're going to go. Try. We're, um, We've got we're, this new camper that we really do need to drive and make sure everything works on it. So we're going, we are going to definitely try to go to the Brizards and reap what you sow uh, in Lake Charles. So. Uh, we hope to go. And thank y'all. He is teething. He usually goes. He is our last of five. So he's number five. Last of five? Is that our last one? <laughs> uh, and with his attitude, probably. It probably so. is. But he usually plays okay with them. But he's got his um, seventh and eighth tooth coming in. And he's ten and a half months. So... Uh, this teething has been not good for the past week and a half. He's got two more bottom teeth coming in, and he's been really fussy. So tonight, I don't think he's going to play with his brothers and sisters. So no, he's not. He's not. And, and really, our oldest is Aiden. He he tries to hold on to him, but he just gets he just has enough, so he just lets him go. <laughs> so so then he comes to mom and daddy. So. Let's sit, he'll sit and down. he usually does really good with them. He'll sit down in our playroom and play with them, but. Uh, he had he had a good nap, so um, and he, I, I fed him right before we started. So uh, I think it's his teeth. I was telling him a while ago when Colby was talking, he was bite trying to bite me, and I said, "You better not bite me." And I have to tell him that a lot. Don't bite me. So I hope that helps on the paddocks. If you have any questions, just email or, or send pictures of what you got. It, you really can move cows around, and you can have more cows than you think. Now I will say this: for 1.5 acres, you may not want to buy. Uh, you know, Angus or Charlay cat, cattle, bigger cattle. You may want to look at stuff like Dexter's or, or I don't know if you're looking at milk cows or Jersey's or, or mini herfers. You may want to look at some mini cows. Uh, you know, I, I'm not a goat person. That's just never been a thing for me. So when we first started and we only had three paddocks, when we originally started cows, we had three paddocks. Well, uh, we had a, a mini Jersey and then um, a little a little calf. Um, but as we grew and our, our 
paddock screw, we, we have a normal size, we have some normal size cow here. So uh, it can work. You just got to make sure you're rotating like you're supposed to and, and make them eat. If you have to supplement hay, supplement hay or alfalfa pellets. But, but um, you know, just if I hope that works or you have, if you have any questions, just shoot it to me. I love Scottish Highland cows. Uh, but here in South Mississippi, I don't know if they can make it. It's it's as hairy as they are. They <laughs> they would hate our temperatures. I got a Great Pyrenees, and every time she can, she goes and plays in the um, the creek just about every morning, just because she can't stand all the hair on her. So I, I love the Highlands. Though. They are beautiful cattle. Miss Paula Jo said, "You guys aren't old enough to have five children." Actually, well, we're actually like sixty-two. You just don't look <laughs> like it, so. <laughs> no. Oh, actually, when I was pregnant with my oldest, Aiden, um, is when I was still working full time at the hospital because I'm a nurse by profession. And a gentleman stopped me in the hall and he said, well, you look like you're 14 years old and pregnant. And I said, well, I am pregnant, but I'm not 14. So, <laughs> um, On the I'd like to something I can butcher. She's in the country. Hey, I'll tell you another fun thing to have on the on our homestead that we've become to love is we have American guinea hog. Uh, guinea hogs are, they're solid black. They look like little wild boars, but really what they, they're, they're not as of a big feeder hog. They're more of a lard pig and they're, they're foragers. So, and they're scavengers. So they do really good at, at, at being a leaner hog. I know that sounds crazy to talk about a pig like that, but they're a clean animal. You can walk to our hogs. You're not going to smell them. Uh, and they're beautiful. So that's another great item to have on the homestead. Uh, she's on country. I don't know if you're interested in pigs, but if you don't look at the cattle, do pastured pork and do American guinea hog because American guinea hog are great. I, I can't say nothing bad about them. We got ours from Alderman Farms, which is another YouTuber, but um, we we love them. Uh, we really do. So that's another option too. But uh, I mean, like I said, and they don't get big. Uh, one good thing about them, they're not going to get three or four hundred pounds, but they may give. They may do. Um, they may get 150 to 200. Uh, we're raising two to basically have piglets, and then we will sell some and kill off some for us. Gosmania, I would say that Elsa was our biggest um, benefit to our farm. Biggest asset, for yeah, sure. That's the word. Biggest asset. Support. She she puts off about a, a gallon and a half to two gallons. Every I've actually morning. got yogurt in the well, we made butter oven. Yesterday. I made butter yesterday, and then I made yogurt tonight. Um, so there's so much you can do with milk. I mean, she has been, it, it's a, it's pros and cons. Like we've talked about, we can't just jump in our RV now. We can't just go spend the night at the beach. I mean, you have, we have to plan and schedule. And we were not like that before. If we decided on a Thursday, we wanted to go to the beach for the weekend, or if we wanted to, um, we have a cabin up in the mountains. If we wanted to uh, drive up and stay at our cabin, that we would just go do that. But, you know, unfortunately, that's part of the sacrifice yeah. now that we just, you know, we just can't do that. I mean, for Thankfully, instance, we do have somebody that has um, offered to help us, but we're not going to abuse that either. But we do have to plan and, and be on schedule now to where before we weren't like that. So that's the pros and cons. We're very thankful for her and all the milk that she gives us. And there's so much you can do with it. Um, but, you know, it's part of it. Sour yeah, cream is something else we do. We missed. Um, we we were going to two other. Uh, we were going to the Shindig VW and then one other one. And our our milker, the person that we thought we were going to have the milk, they just backed out. Yeah. Well, at that point, we were uh, hand milking at that point. Yeah, too, I mean, we we hand we milk. We had not gotten our um, pump fixed. Now, yeah. I, again, I know you, I don't know if you've seen the video. I'm not a big pump person. However. Uh, and the reason is because I don't believe you're going to pull off as much cream with the pump as what you would if you were hand milking because that's that's higher in her. She That uses what she holds off her calf. So, again, if you're hand milking, you can get it all out. I just think the pump's not doing as good a justice. But anyways, beside the point, um, since we got that pump, though, it's allowed us to be able to make some plans to go to these other places. We're going to go to HOA, and then we're going to the Pratt family home, uh, Hoot Nanny in uh, Michigan, and go see my Garter and things like that. So. So that's the only reason we really got the pump working was because we could not find a hand milker. It's hard enough to find someone just to come, you know, use a pump. But uh, the hand milk was a, a big issue for yeah. us. So. And like tendon, you talked about um, some other animals. You know, we never had a problem with getting somebody to come and feed our chickens and uh, tend to things around here, gather the eggs and stuff like that. But when you're when you're dealing with a cow, a milk cow, this is something that has to be done on a timely 
Man, you know, if she's used to getting milked at four or five in the morning, you can't show up at lunch and decide to milk her. Um, she's going to be very antsy, agitated. Um, they don't like when their schedule's messed up. Um, you can't decide I'm sick or it's thunderstorming because we went out in a thunderstorm two days ago and milked. I mean, just whatever you got to do, you got to do. And, and it's something that has to be done. It doesn't matter what it looks like outside. If it's 18 degrees, it doesn't matter. It's got to be done. So I, that, what was so funny is, is we were wanting to get into to milking not too long ago. And this was really before we started YouTubing or, or right when we started YouTubing. It was Excuse right me. when we started. But when we, when we did it, uh, I told Misty, I said, if we're going to do this, I want to get the cow in the most inopportune time to do it. So we uh, we got this cow when it was like in the 30s, um, raining. It was right in the mid. Uh, I don't know if y'all know Mississippi weather, but sometimes it's cold, but pretty much it can be cold, but it's just rainy. It's just terrible. Uh, but basically our first two or three weeks, we were slopping around in mud uh, trying to milk this cow. And it was, I mean, it was cold, 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 cold. But that's that's OK. You know, like I said, we but if we could get through that, my goal was to if I could get through those days, then these other days can be easy. So that's what's happened. So it's worked out good. Uh, so I wanted to come in. Batesville. To... Clay Bank is from Batesville, Mississippi. Live... So that, that's a pretty good ways yeah. from where we are. But anyways, oh, Patty's in northwest Mississippi. OK, well, there is some Mississippi folks on here. I know the Beach fam, I think, is from south Mississippi. And I know Goss Mania is, too. So. Uh, that's 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 great. That's awesome. There's one of the it's comments. hot and humid here too, for sure, for sure. Um, so your deal should be pretty close to where I am. Just uh, you know, as far as your temperature and everything is going to be the same. So uh, I keep mine in my greenhouse, direct sunlight most of the day. Um, very little water. Make sure you've got good soil. And your deal should do do pretty good. Lots of lots of sunlight, little water. BW, uh, when you say you keep your cows on on yours, so is your calf drying her up? To I mean, is, is he is she sucking your cow down to where it's not causing any kind of mastitis or any kind of problems there? Um, because what we've seen is with us having a milk cow that's doing about two gallons, it's like, and we're only milking once a day. So let me get that and say that too. It seems like. Uh, when we if we do that or I was talking to several milkers in our area that is not getting all the milk out of that cow and it seems like it causes issues for us of drying her up so that's why we still have to milk every day but is your calves pulling all her milk down um we have a Marie says we do a cow share then the other family milks when we're gone unless they're gone too then we find someone else that would be awesome we thought about that and, and th th again to be honest here it is so hard it's to find so people. uncommon what we do is very uncommon where we live there's been a lot of people that just we have dairy big dairy farms here and only very few now and to to tell somebody that we go milk a cow every morning most people look at us like we're crazy windmill farm uh we'll forgive you for living in oxford it's okay uh it'd be better <laughs> if you lived in star but uh we'll forgive you this once but. Uh, no, that's, that's been the hardest thing. <laughs> that's been the hardest thing for us is that we live in a town of about 25 to 30,000 people in a city county area. And for us just to find someone to milk, I mean, I have one of my dear friends that I work with is a beef cattleman. I mean, that's all his, he loves is his passion. But to be honest with you, the thought of milking a cow would, it's just, it's too much for him. So he, he, he tries to stay away. Oh gosh. Do we need to report you windmill farms? I'm telling you, hotty toddy gross. No, I, we we do pull from Ole Miss sometimes when they're not playing MSU or when there's no threat to MSU. So I guess we'll give it to you. Uh, no, but I will say it: the cow's the biggest asset. However, it does have a lot of responsibility to it. You know, chickens, pigs, gardens, bees, greenhouse, all that stuff we've had for a long time. Uh, or the pigs not, but everything else we've had for a long time. And those things, you know, we can always find somebody to help us when we go out of town. But uh, cows are another another, uh, another issue that you do need to make sure you're ready for. So, Yes, we, we, we do love MSU. We're an MSU fan. So. Um, 
Yeah, so so we're we're not. I know I saw some people say they were from the Delta. Again, we're about an hour south of Jackson, so we're not too far from the Delta. But like I said, we're about an hour south of our capital. Chicken's so. a big step for us too. Chicken's um that was kind of our gateway into homesteading. Uh, we had always done a garden, have had chickens pretty much our whole marriage yeah. basically. Um, but we've been real happy with our chickens. We've uh, always been really pleased with them we have about uh probably about 30 chickens now they're um, pretty easy to tend to pretty low maintenance so. yeah um now we've gotten to where we we try to go with colored eggs and things like that so we went from just having orpingtons and barred rocks and rhode island reds to having some of the olive eggs the easter eggs and uh, that, the blue and so the green we've had fun eggs are just beautiful they're and, my favorite and what we do is we, we've gotten to where we started incubate so we've tried to we've tried to grow chickens and sell chickens and we've done well with eggs and chickens but um chickens are not my thing i, I aiden likes the chickens he takes care of them and don't get wrong we check on them but uh the bees in in the garden and the cows kind of take my time up misty's real big on the greenhouse too so she kind of takes care of it too yeah aiden um you know he's 11 now we've really tried to teach him responsibility and you know there's i would be willing to say there's good night honey hollow there's a, a lot that we would not be able to do if it weren't for Aiden. So, hey, uh, Mo, you can come milk. That's the, I was talking about you. You can come milk for me if you wanted to. <laughs> uh, anyways, hey, good night, Honey Hollow. Thank y'all for coming by. But um, again, for us, we we love the cows, but um, it is a bigger responsibility. So, um. Hey, Ben, BW Farms, did you ever get your honey harvested from the last week, extracted? Um, we have got ours done. However, we're going to have to go back into our hives and pull some more honey. A lot of it wasn't capped yet, so, you know, we, we do have to go back. So That's true. There is a reason uh, they had so many kids back in the day, farmers did. So you have to have the help, and we're so thankful that Aiden – that he helps us or there's a lot that we would not be able to do without him. Did you see that? He said, uh, he said the calf does milk her all the way out. That's awesome. I, that's, I'm hoping that we'll see our, our, the, the crazy thing is our, our little Jersey heifer that the one that's pregnant. Um, she's bagged up. Her bag is actually bigger than our milk cow. So we're hoping and she is feisty. She, we've been trying to do some stanchion training and I hadn't done it this last two weeks, but We've been trying to do some stanchion training with her. And, man, I, I never knew a cow could kick so so quick and so hard and so much to the side. I've never seen a cow do that. So, Trent says so that she that. wasn't bred when she got here, but I don't know. If we're she wondering. Could, she's if this is not a mini, huge. Trent, if this is not a mini jersey and this is a limousine, I don't know. I'm going to be a little upset. You're going to have to come help us pull, pull the calf then. <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, anyways, um, the Bard Rocks. Yeah, Moke's been trying to get uh, the barred rocks from us. You can get them. I mean, I don't mind. We'll work something out. Hey, by the way, I gave that cow that shot today, but uh, you can get them. But um, like I said, I, I don't know if they're layers anymore because they're about three and a half, four years old. So. Our help grew up and moved away. <laughs> you know, the funny thing is, is, is right now, because the baby is so hands on, a lot of my time that even last summer, even though I was really big pregnant, I could still let the girls play and just kind of do what I needed to do, even though I moved a little bit slower, right? But so much of my time is spent with the baby um, to where, you know, I have to depend on Aiden to go out and feed the chickens or go out and water or, you know, little stuff like that to where it used to, uh, you know, my time wasn't taken up by that. So uh, Beauty was winning, Trent, but uh, I think I ended up winning the battle. She, she got her shot. So uh, we tied her to a, a little post so we he we, had me like freaking out i said you're gonna break that needle off in her and then i don't know what we're gonna do but aiden was so funny aiden it. had a eight this is like a 50 foot rope that we got this cow on so we had it lassoed around the pole aiden is 30 foot away from the cow but he's like raking on this thing and i said aiden you don't have to even pull on it baby it's, it's wrapped around it's lassoed around the pole the pole is gonna do the work but uh, he was he was nervous he can be holding that strap. So, but hey, it worked out. We got the cow shot. So. <laughs> but anyways, it worked out good. Um, other than that, I'm hoping that we're having an easier weekend. And uh, 
and an easier next week than what we had this week. It's been a fun week, but a very stressful week as well. So, um, but we are, we've been working on the pumpkin patch, been working on trying to get some of the paddocks looking better. We've had some some of the paddocks that we grew rye in, it's not growing back like we want. So again, we, uh, we're we trying to get those back like we're supposed to. Hi, Hattie. Thanks for stopping in with us. Yeah, uh, VW, I've dealt with that a lot. I've, I'm actually, my family, a lot of my distant family and, and cousins all have beef cattle. They're cattlemen. They've been cattlemen. Um, my approach to using here, this is what I get. When I talk about rotational grazing and I talk about um, a non-conventional way of farming, uh, which is homesteading, you know, I talk about giving cows apple cider vinegar. Um, talk about doing organic grass fed, you know, no, no feed, no feed just to feed them. Thank um, you, Heidi. I think people get blown away at that because they say that same thing. It's not how it's done. You know, we've been doing this for years. Don't, don't listen to that. But I'll be honest with you. Um, our paddocks, our summer grass paddocks, uh, they're, they're almost ankle deep. I mean, actually it's getting to a point where if I can't get my cows eating more, uh, of the grass there. We're going to have to probably snip the tops because the, the grass is starting to get so mature. So it's been a great thing. Rotational grazing does work. Actually, uh, uh, I don't know. No, the next video we have coming out, we actually go up to where we have our big, our new bull and our, our little heifers. And the one we just had the calf with uh, at our other farm um, was a big pa uh, big pasture, basically. Well, my my dad, who who that's his farm. Um you know, he, he listened to a lot of my family and they were saying, hey, you just leave it open. The cows will eat it all and you have plenty of grass. Well, they pick and choose. So they bait the, the Bermuda and they bait the Bahia, the little stuff. Picking and choosing is the key. And there's a little heel. A cow is, is not going to go eat on heel unless they're made to. So we we now I told him, I said, we're going to do paddocks there. That's the only way that the grass is going to do good. So we put paddocks in. Man, it's worked out great. They're having to eat on the heel. Um, where he has weeds there. I don't have weeds at the house because, again, they're eating everything there. And then ultimately the things that's growing back are the good things because that's what they're eating and reproducing through the manure. So it's working out great for us. But you're right. I've almost had to do the kind of proving my way. And it's worked, man. The, the rotational grazing has worked tremendously here. So. I heard some people talking about rain. We got a good bit of rain um, this past complain. week. Yeah, we when you had to go milk in the storm, right. but we needed it. So we're, we, our gardens needed it. I've been getting bugs off of plants and worms off and throwing them to the chickens, but our tomatoes and uh, our zucchini and just a lot of our garden just needed it. We, we definitely needed rain. So yeah, we, um, of course, corn didn't do well this year. Our tomatoes are now starting to come through, but, um, we've got, I think I counted, it's right at 220, tons 230 tons tomato plants. Tomato steel. They're still um, not red. And it's a few hundred tomatoes on them. So we know we picked about 20 yesterday of the smaller kind of the yellow, what we call um, the yellow jubilees, uh, which I love. Don't get me wrong. I love yellow tomatoes, but uh, they're really starting to turn. So I think uh, I think they're going to start turning a lot now. You're so right. Rotational grazing really is common sense. And I guess if you had a ton but of But nobody cows, does it unless it's bigger paddocks. Yeah. For us, we we did intense rotational grazing. So we put, we'll put four cows on a half acre. I mean, and I know that sounds crazy, but it works. Cow. It works. And we'll put four or five cows on, on a 0.5 acre and they'll... They'll eat it, but by the time they work around our eight paddocks, that that's at eight, you know, six to eight weeks of killing time. So that paddock looks extremely good by the time they're back. Dolsmania so. says our neighbors have ten acres, ten cattle, three six month old cows, and some are looking unhealthy, showing their tailbones, tailbone, tailbone hop. Etc. Yeah. He doesn't rotate, and you can tell it's affecting them. That's why, because they they just let them go on that acreage because they've always heard one acre per cow. And I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm, I'm please, if you have big cows, picking and don't. choosing is the key. Yeah. Is, you know, for us, we don't have that big layout, so we put them on a small area, force them to eat what's there, and then move them. Yeah. And so that's the key. They can't pick and choose what they want. If you let All them pick and choose what they, they want, will. you'll have weeds and, you, yeah. and you'll have mature grass. That they'll they'll leave and let go. And then here you are trying to bush hog all that down while they're eating all the immature grass that's so good that they love. So you just got to 
I, we love do what braces. works for you. Yeah, that me. works for us. Right. That that's that's what we have found work for us and has done amazing for our cows. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. But uh, you know, a Jersey, yeah, Jersey cows are always going to kind of look a little poor. But man, I, I think our our two Jersey cows and our Jersey bull are probably some of the best looking. I'm biased, don't get me wrong, but <laughs> they look really good, and, and it's because they they're on this rotational grazing plan. So. But we make them eat it. We're very intense. I'm not gonna let them out a day early. I'm gonna make them eat every bit of it. So, but you know, that's how that's what we do. Now, everybody has a different opinion. Uh, uh, you and know, that's you're, okay. Yeah, definitely. Um, but we we do what works for us, and we right. it's been proven. Not my us has been proven by other people, um, but it has worked for us as well. I know most of y'all know, of course, but I, one the the way of rotational grazing that I really tried to emphasize was um, we love watching things about polyface farms and reading about Joel Salatin, but his, his rotational grazing plan is, is phenomenal. And um, that's what we try to, we try to say, okay, can we take that plan and see if it works here? And, and so far it's worked really good, but um, I've always heard, you know, when you're deal with cows, you deal with grass. So that's what we've done. And, and so far it's done real well. Now, one thing we have messed up on was I planted almost half of my paddocks in rye. Um, and, and three of those five paddocks are struggling right now. So we're, we're really trying to kind of baby them. And so we've taken two of those off rotation right now just to try to baby them back up to where they need to be. So, but other than that, Mom, I think we've been going a while. So I think we're going to cut it off for the night. But uh, our kids are getting restless. Uh, Thank you all so much for stopping in as always. And um, remember, please go check out our giveaway video so you can comment on there and enter our giveaway. All the seeds that I mentioned earlier are from our homestead. I said I planted the basil already. The basil's growing up, doing amazing. So you'll really enjoy that. Fresh basil. Is, um, we actually had some in our spaghetti sauce tonight, and it was amazing. Um, so y'all go check that out. Don't forget our giveaway. Thank you all again. I, we can't say enough. We love when we get to uh, counteract and communicate with a lot of y'all. So thank you all so very much. Thank for you, Love and Ivy Farm. But y'all have a good night. and uh, Happy homesteading, y'all. Bye. Bye.